Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bosch. The number of clean diesel models in North America will double by 2014. Bosch Clean Diesel. Good. Clean. Fun. Bridgestone. Your journey. Our passion. Dow Automotive Systems. Improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. And by the 2013 Hyundai Sonata. Learn more at HyundaiSonata.com. Hello and welcome to AutoLine Daily. It's Thursday, September 27, 2012, and we're glad you could join us. I'm Murray Feldman, Fox 2 News here in Detroit, filling in for John, who's living it up in Paris. Yeah, apparently there's an auto show going on right now. Who knew? Anyway, if you missed our live coverage of the event, please check it out at AutoLine.tv. We'll put a link in today's show notes so that you won't miss it. And we have to thank both PwC and Audi for sponsoring our coverage of the 2012 Paris Motor Show. Thank you guys for all of your help. Here's the news. The Canadian auto workers reached a new labor agreement with Chrysler. According to Bloomberg, the deal is similar to the ones with Ford and General Motors. Workers will get lump sum payments of about $2,000 instead of raises, as well as $3,000 bonuses for ratifying the contract. In exchange, the CAW agreed to lower starting wages and extend the time new hires reach their maximum pay. The agreement still needs to be ratified by the CAW members. Jaguar unveiled an all-new two-seat convertible called the F-Type in Paris today. The rear-wheel drive vehicle has a choice of two gasoline engines, a 3-liter supercharged V6, and a 5-liter supercharged V8. The V8 can hit 60 miles per hour in just 4.2 seconds, and it has a top speed of 186 miles per hour. Both engines are matched to an 8-speed automatic transmission that includes paddle shifters. And in other Paris news, Rolls-Royce unveiled Art Deco-inspired versions of the Ghost and the Phantom sedan and coupe. The cars pay homage to the 1925 Paris exhibition that coined the Art Deco name and feature color schemes that are correct to that period. And the interiors feature details like ornamental glassware, and mother of pearl, and silver inlays. Rolls-Royce says an exclusive collection of these vehicles will be made available to the company's customers. Now for something a little closer to home. Yesterday, Lexus hosted a local drive of its updated LS flagship. A lot has changed, even if the styling is in a dramatic departure from today's version. A company spokesman told us 3,000 of the car's 6,000 major components have been reworked. That total does not include things like the nuts and the bolts. The LS has adopted the company's familiar spindle grill, and it works very well on a big vehicle like this. And for the first time ever, there's an F-Sport version of the car with more aggressive styling and hardware to match. With air suspension, the F-Sport rides almost an inch lower than a standard LS with coil springs. It also boasts Brembo front brakes, LED headlamps, and available all-wheel drive. Moving inside, it's obvious this is where Lexus spent a big part of its bucks. The interior is all new with a design theme that's clearly inspired by the company's smaller GS sedan. It's swathed in soft leather features, a massive navigation screen, and even special wood accents. This optional trim is called Shimamoku, and it's actually manufactured by Lexus using a special process. It's very involved, but the results are beautiful. The 2013 Lexus LS goes on sale in November. F Sport and hybrid models will be available a little bit later. Hot on the wheels of its light-duty 1500 model Ram truck just revealing its latest crop of HD pickups. Chrysler trumpeting the lineup's capability, claiming best-in-class honors in a number of areas, including towing, payload, and turning radius, just to name a few. Of course, the trucks get new interiors, new technology, and new safety features as well. As for powertrains, the range-topping 3500 model will be offered with a 5.7-liter Hemi V8 engine for the first time. It'll serve alongside the ever-capable Cummins diesel. In related news, Chrysler's created a subdivision within Ram trucks specifically to serve the commercial market. The group has employees dedicated to developing, marketing, and selling these industrial-grade vehicles. I'm Craig Cole in the wide open spaces of northern Utah, putting a brand new compact crossover to the test, and that report is up next. Dow Automotive Systems, driving solutions in automotive, commercial transportation, and aftermarket with innovative products like Betamate structural adhesives. Lighter, stronger, safer. DowBetamate.com. This Utah vacation spot is the perfect backdrop for the all-new five-passenger Hyundai Santa Fe, which is significantly lighter and a bit roomier than its predecessor. 
the company thinks it will be a big hit with both young couples and empty nesters. They're going to be surprised about design. The first thing they're going to notice when they get in this car is they're going to see a cabin that looks like a luxury class vehicle. So even today, while the journalists have been driving around, there's been numerous comments about how luxurious and how premium feeling the interior is. I think the second thing they're, they're going to notice is how uh, the de exterior design is just way ahead of some of our competitors. It looks advanced. It looks unique and robust. Uh, it has a sturdy feeling. So people are going to really appreciate the design uh, focus of this vehicle as well. The third thing probably is going to be uh, the interior versatility. So we have a 40, 20, 40 split folding rear seat that gives you so many different combinations for cargo and uh, passenger carrying capability. The five passenger Santa Fe is impressive on its own, but wait, there's more. Check this out, it's a seven passenger model as well. It's built on the same architecture as the five, but it features a longer wheelbase and a third row of seats. It's gonna help us deliver for that family market who has really wanted to buy a Hyundai, but we really haven't had a whole lot in terms of product to deliver to them. So um, we think this will be a nice boost to our business going forward. Yeah, we're saying goodbye to the Veracruz. The Veracruz um, was a wonderful experiment for us. It was a, a premium uh, seven passenger crossover. And I think one of our learnings um, as we matured in the US market was there really wasn't necessarily the need to go premium um, with Veracruz. And one of the key insights with, with the new Santa Fe lineup is there's a five passenger version and a seven passenger version, um, but neither is more premium than the other. Um, they're both designed to meet the needs of families, either smaller families or larger families. With these two versions of the Santa Fe, both the five passenger sport model as well as the seven passenger version, Hyundai believes it has the family market covered. And no matter which one you choose, there is plenty of interior space inside, enough even for your four-legged friends. Reporting from Park City, Utah for Autoline Daily, I'm Craig Cole. And that just about wraps up today's episode of Auto Line Daily. But before signing off, make sure that you watch tonight's episode of Auto Line After Hours, another fine program. The auto extremist Peter DeLorenzo will be the master of ceremonies this evening. He'll be joined by Jim Hall of 2953 Analytics and Gary Vasilash of Automotive Design and Production. The live AAH webcast kicks off at 6 p.m. Eastern Time at Autoline.tv. Check it out. I'm Murray Feldman, Fox 2 News in Detroit, sitting in today for John. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.